In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. In the waters of baptism, David died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. On the day of his baptism, David put on Christ. On the day of his religious profession, he was clothed with, gr with the grace to live the evangelical counsels. At the end of time, may Christ clothe him in glory and enfold him in his love. Good morning, all. I'm Father Bill Lease, the Provincial Superior of the U.S. Province of Priests of Bro and Brothers of Holy Cross. And on behalf of all the religious of our province, I want to welcome you, as well as extend my deepest condolences to Dr. and Mrs. Scheidler, to David's brothers and sisters, and to the entire family. At the death of your son, brother, uncle, nephew, and at the death of our, our brother, David. We welcome you to this holy place to celebrate Father David's life because we know that death and darkness will not prevail and that light will win. And indeed that Christ already has and has overcome the darkness. So we come together to celebrate the life and faith and dedication of our dear brother David. 
On behalf of us all, I also welcome Bishop Bill Walk, who has graciously agreed to preside and preach today. Bishop Bill is also an ordination classmate of Father David and his dear friend. Welcome, Bill. It's good to have you home with us. Thank you for being here. In his baptism, David received the mark of Christ's cross. At his profession of perpetual vows, he received the image of Christ crucified and was invited to follow in his footsteps. May he come to share in the glory of his resurrection. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Father David, your servant and priest, whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exult forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if to others, indeed, they seem punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their judgment, they shall shine and dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and their Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with the elect. The word of the Lord. Crook 
A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power. Proclaim the word, be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires and insatiable curiosity will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. But you, be self-possessed in all circumstances. Put up with hardship. Perform the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a libation. At the time of my, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus had said this, he raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. Just as you gave him authority over all people, so that he may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, 
Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, the glory that I have had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those who you gave to me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the word you gave me I have given to them. And they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours. And everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so they may be one just as we are. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Gina la buona ni taka tifu. Maybe I didn't do that right, but I'm not going to do it again. That song, written by uh, the, uh, Steve Warner and sung quite often by the Notre Dame Folk Choir, including David, who sang, sang it from right up there many times and here in this holy place. That song is, of course, the, uh, trans the uh, Swahili and English version of a version of the Magnificat, Mary's praise to God, her explosion of praise and exaltation to God. You know, that's in Luke chapter 1. Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and said, as soon as I heard your greeting in my ears, Mary, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who believed what the Lord had said to her would be fulfilled. And then it was Mary's turn. Filled with the Holy Spirit, she says, My soul doth magnify the Lord. My spirit exalts in God my Savior. Why? Because he has looked with favor on me, his lowly servant. God, who is mighty, has done great things for me. And I say, I think of, I think of David when I hear that song, Gina La Buana, for a couple of reasons. One, because David's life was lived like that, a magnificat, this magnanimous man glorified God in his preaching, in his singing, in his talks at retreats, in his campus ministry, in, in his uh, ministry to the students here and in other places in Chicago or Arizona or Mexico, in his work here in these chapels, in uh, hearing, uh, celebrating the Sacrament of Reconciliation, in this very pulpit, preaching praise and glory and forgiveness and repentance. This was David's song as well. David, the mother of Mary, a, a beloved mother of Mary, our mother, sang his praises often. But there's one more reason why I think of him when I hear that song. It's recorded and it's on a CD, or I don't, did we say that, or album or whatever, but anyway. And I've listened to it so often that I wore that CD out. This was before I put it on my computer. And I had to buy another one and now I listen to it often. And I love it because it's that last line, that deep, profound, dare I say, nasally, 
uh, 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 tone at the end. Ni taka ti That's David. Every time you hear that song, that's David. And I would smile, and I remember telling him that. I said, David, I hear you all the time. He said, what do you mean? And I said, in that song. And he smiled, you know, kind of with that sly smile. No. And I said, listen. And we listened, and he said, that is me. And so I think of him all the time, not just because that's his voice, but that's his heart. That's what David uh, did. He sang Mary, uh, God's praise like Mary with all that he did. And I, I love him for that. And I will always try to imitate that and remember that and, and uh, imitate that in whatever I do as well. I delight in God my Savior. Normally we say my spirit exalts in God my Savior, but that song is translated, I delight in God my Savior. And I think we can say that that also, that word really captures who David is. He is someone who delighted in life. He delighted in his family. We know that. We, all of us who heard David preach or sat with him at dinner or spent time with him in the seminary in formation or in the community, we heard a lot of stories about your family over and over again. In the novitiate and in the seminary, um, David would often, I, I'd pass by, uh, we had little phone booths back then and everything, I know, it was before cell phones, but David would be talking and you could see either he'd be laughing or very concerned because of his position, because he was a seminarian and a priest, I think a lot of uh, his family members, his siblings, his nieces and nephews confided in him and wanted to share the great joys of their life and also to be consoled and to be comforted by him. David delighted in his parents. David delighted to be a son of James and Maria. He talked about them constantly. You are the ones who fed him and nourished him. I don't just mean with food, but with the faith, with that praise that he sang and he dedicated his whole life to. And he was very proud of that. He was proud of his Mexican heritage, proud of his German heritage. I was proud that he could speak both languages and, and I was a little jealous. But he was not only proud of that, but he would visit those places and, um, and, and use those languages as often as he could to continue to pour out that praise, that glory, the goodness of God to other people. He delighted in his family, and you know that. David also delighted in, in his community and his brothers around him, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. Even though perhaps you know, there were times when he was treated unfairly, it's clear that David just was, as we heard in that second reading, he persisted, he was consistent. He, did, he, just, he continued to minister day after day, year after year, in the mission, in schools, in parishes, wherever he was sent, wherever we entrusted him to go, he was consistent, he continued to serve. He delighted in the community. And it was just so fun to spend time with him, not only in the seminary and formation, but in meals together, praying with him. There's always a story. There's always, always something. He would always uh, just share a joke, a laugh, uh, uh, something, some joy. But what I liked, about, what I loved about him are many things. One is that David never dominated. We, I, we would all say, David, tell us that thing. Tell us that story about whatever. And he would. But then he would say, uh, wait, Doherty, you tell this story. Uh, Cooper, tell this story about this person. Wacker, tell this one. And he would, uh, he would like to share in that. I think he delighted in having us all together. And so, and I appreciated that very much. David, as we know, delighted in life. Um, his love of the color orange is famous. I have no idea how that started. I don't know if he knows how it started, but we can talk after. But it was a thing. It is a thing. Look at how many are wearing orange today. Look at the flowers here before his, his picture. There, there's orange all around. I notice orange even coming through the stained glass window on all of us today. It, um, it, it was the orange we know is a color of energy and, and fire and faith and passion. And certainly David had that passion and shared that with us. I remember going to his, seeing him in his room in St. Edwards. And I said, David, I just have to look at your closet. Why? And I said, I just want to see this. And I went in there, and sure enough, his non-clerical shirts were mostly orange, almost all, and he had them arrayed from light yellow all the way to dark, flaming, burnt orange. And I said, David, and he said, what? <laughs> but, and it wasn't just shirts, of course, but everything. You know, socks before that was cool, and Crocs, and a phone cover, and everything. It was just his way of showing 
us, I think, how that life is good. Life should be enjoyed. Life can be enjoyable and even fun. And so I know a lot of us will continue to wear orange and think of David a lot. I got out my favorite, my most orangey socks when I packed from Florida, and I'm wearing them today. I'll show you later. Um, and, and one other thing, I just remember that, um, well, about David, lighting up the world, uh, lighting up a room. Well, I gave it away, but it was, it was one day we were eating here at Corby Hall, and there was a brother, Brother Valerie Greenwell, just a great guy, great brother in community, very, um, kind of a dry sense of humor and um, quiet, but then he would just throw out a zinger. And we were sitting there at dinner once, and David was telling story after story, and I think Brother Val was trying to jump in, and he couldn't. And finally, and he had this very unique voice, he said, well, David, you're the kind of person that could light up a room just by leaving it, he said. <laughs> but we laughed. But of course, David was the opposite. It was he would light up the room when he entered and would fill the room with, with his larger-than-life personality. Now, I want to say something about the readings, of course, these awesome readings that we just heard. They speak to us, of course, as the readings always do. And it's not just that they tell us what we want or need to hear, but they tell us what we have to hear as well. These readings give us the good news, but they also challenge all of us to live our faith well. St. Paul speaks in, in this final farewell to the Thessalonians, and he tells them to be persistent, whether convenient or inconvenient. And we can think about David's life and see how he did that, but I believe that we are supposed to look inward and say, am I doing that? Am I persistent in living my faith in proclaiming God's greatness, God's mercy, God's justice in the world. Put up with hardship, St. Paul says. Do I do that or do I complain constantly and ask God to take it away? Perform the work of an evangelist. This is not just set aside for priests and deacons and bishops and religious, but all of us are called to be evangelists, evangelizers, to proclaim God's glory, the good news in the world today as we recognize that David did this faithfully, we are called to look inward and ask, how am I supposed to do that? How, how can I be an evangelizer? How can I be persistent in living my, my vocation today, no matter what our vocation is? And we have our work cut out for us, don't we? We know that the world needs good leaders and evangelists today. There's so much brokenness, so much anxiety, so much separation and fear in the world and most of all, division. Jesus Christ urges us not to pull ourselves apart, but to remain in him. Remain in me as the vine, and you are the branches. Apart from me, he says, you can do nothing. How is God calling you not only to be in union with Jesus Christ, his son, but with one another, to strengthen the bonds of family, of community, of the family of God here on earth? Through prayer, through love of our neighbor and through works of charity, I believe we can do that. We strengthen those bonds. We answer Jesus' call. Yes, we are grieving David's death. It's so incredibly sad to think of the world without David present physically, or Holy Cross without David, or the priesthood. But we must take up the mantle and go forth from the time of Christ's ascension into heaven, we who would follow him must learn from each other and imitate each other and support each other in proclaiming the good news, the goodness of God. And then that last point in Paul's letter, which is very poignant for us today as we reflect on David's life, especially in the last couple of months. St. Paul says, I am being poured out as a libation Sounds strange to us, I suppose. We don't like to talk about suffering, redemptive suffering. And in a good way, thanks be to God, we do all we can to alleviate any kind of suffering. And I pray that David didn't really feel that the, the pain in the last couple of months that it looked like he was, his body was experiencing. But nonetheless, in his body, we can say he was being poured out as a libation, as an offering for sins as a way to heal some of this brokenness in the church, in the world, in our families, in the Holy Cross family. David was being poured out as a libation before our very eyes. And 
whether he knew it or not, whether he experienced the fullness of pain, again, we hope he didn't, but nonetheless, he quietly offered that up to God. Jesus said, there is no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends. And it's not just expressing love, but it is participating in the redemptive act of Jesus Christ. That's what every priest does, not only when he celebrates Mass, but in the way he lives his life, pours out his life day after day for God's people and the Church to cooperate with Jesus Christ in his act of salvation. The first reading is from the letter, I'm sorry, from the Book of Wisdom, written about a hundred years before Jesus Christ became flesh. And even then, God put it in our hearts to hope, to dream of something more. They didn't know what yet because Jesus Christ had not come and died and been raised. But God revealed to the sacred writer, the sacred author, the souls of the just are in the hand of God and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in view of the foolish to be dead and they're going away an affliction, but they are in peace. Chastised a little, they have been found worthy of God and will reign with God forever in heaven. This is what we celebrate today for David and for all of us. We pray that we may take up that mantle, that we too may pour out our lives according to our vocation and our state of life so that we can unite ourselves more perfectly to Christ and be with him in the kingdom of heaven and bring as many souls as we can. May God bless you, David's beloved family, his brothers, his sisters, his many nieces and nephews, great nieces and nephews. Like I said, he talked about you all the time. Maria and James, may God bless you. They say often, you know, it's not supposed to be like this, but it is. This is what, what has happened. This is what God has allowed to happen for a myster mysterious reason. But nonetheless, I know that you are strong as a family, and I know that though your faith is tested, you will strengthen each other. You will continue to pour yourselves out for each other and for us, showing us what faith looks like, what perseverance and persistence looks like, showing us what devotion and love look like every day. Thank you for giving him to Holy Cross and to the Church. Just as in a marriage there have been good times and bad in sickness and in health, we have experienced that and continue to in, in our world, in our Church, and in our congregation. And I apologize for the times that Holy Cross hurt you or broke his heart through action or inaction. And I pray that you will always remain connected to us. You don't need David physically here to be connected to us here at, with Holy Cross and Notre Dame. He can still do that from heaven, and I pray that that connection is always, always connected, always there for us. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall reach them. I am being poured out as a libation. I have finished the race. I have fought the good fight. May we be able to say that at the end of our lives, however long, God, however long they will be, however, long, however many years God gives us the privilege of living here on earth, may we be able to say that I am being poured out as a libation for the world. And may we say especially Paul's last words, from now on, a crown of righteousness awaits me, and not only me, but all who have waited for the Lord's appearance. May God bless you today and always. May God receive David's beautiful soul into the bright orange light of heaven. And may God bring us comfort and peace so that we may do what he did. We may proclaim God's glory. We may be faithful, persistent, and true to God's gospel of Jesus Christ.
God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ his Son from death. With confidence, we pray in his name. suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic, for those who are ill, for the recovery, and for all those providing essential services, especially those in the medical profession, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For our nation, may it witness an end to all forms of racial discrimination and know a greater respect and reverence for all life at every stage. Let us pray to the Lord. For the work of the Catholic education at every level to which our brother David committed many years of service, may all those educated in the Holy Cross tradition continue to grow in their desire to know, love, and serve God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the various parish communities which our brother David served both here at Notre Dame, in South Bend, and in Monterey, Mexico, may all those who were touched by Father David's priestly ministry be comforted in this time of loss. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who give their time and musical talent in service to the Lord and his church. We pray in a special way today for the Notre Dame Folk Choir, which Father David served as chaplain for many years. Let us pray to the Lord. For Father David's family, for his parents, James and Maria, his seven siblings, their families, and for Father David's 44 nieces and nephews, and three grandnephews. May they be strengthened in this time of grief by the promise of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. For our brother David, who for 26 years ministered faithfully as a Holy Cross priest, may he come to share in the banquet feast of heaven and join and accompany the choir of angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother David. Cleanse him of of his sins and grant him the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, David, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your pres presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, my brother Kevin, bishop of this local church, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, David, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. It's our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for David, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. With faith in Jesus Christ, let us take leave of our brother, Father David. His religious life on this earth was a sign of the kingdom which is to come. May our farewell express our love for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day in that kingdom we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother David in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give thanks to you for the blessings which you bestowed upon our brother in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother, Father David, to his place of rest. Amen. 